finally made it, you know, we made it to the ocean. No, it's wrapped around. Oi, oi, oi. We're sailing! The Delaware Bay is actually super calm today. And it starts throwing you down the CND Canal. It's not fair, I don't see with my eye. <laughs> Him? No, definitely not. Poor guy. I really feel for him. Looks like it's been there a while though. Cape May is such a sweet anchorage. It's like super protected. There's been, I was going for a quite a bit of a blow today and it's, it's perfect here. Love it. It's actually better than Atlantic Highlands I think because we're kind of 360 surrounded. But it's really funny because the current's pretty strong here. So the boats point into the current versus pointing into the wind. So we were getting a bit of the wind on our beam, so the boat was moving a little bit, but not too, too bad. And right now we're supposed to, I think we're like close to the end of the peak and then it should be getting better. So hopefully tomorrow we can go explore Cape May a little more. It's so nice. The water is really chilly though, but it's so cool to be back out in the waves and the ocean. And I actually really want to go surfing once the waves pick up at some point. <laughs> it's kind of surreal being here on the Atlantic Ocean. We finally made it, you know, we made it to the ocean after being landlocked, sort of, in, in the Great Lakes. And we made our biggest passage ever so far. Uh, at night in the Atlantic Ocean. It's, it's kind of, it's a whole new world out here. Like you can't, everything's different. You know, you have so many more things to consider between the swell, the wind direction against the swell, the tide. It's just, whether you're sailing or just setting your anchor, there's just so much more dynamic, uh, dynamic aspects to it where you have to consider a lot of different aspects. Uh, we finally got a decent weather window. It really wasn't what we were hoping for. We ended up beating into the wind pretty much the whole time, but, and motor sailing, obviously, but it was still wonderful. It was a great experience. I'm happy it's done because it was one of the more tricky stretches to try to get a weather window for, but now we're done it. And uh, I guess the next one is trying to get up, up the um, Delaware River, which is kind of, sorry, the Delaware Bay and then we're gonna go through the canal getting over to into the Chesapeake and that's another kind of tricky one because you got to time the uh, tide you basically want to leave here which is Cape May at low tide so that you can get the top part of the curve of the tide so you're getting high tide and like the middle mid tide and mid tide of both on the high tide side of things so that you're not beating into really steep waves and so you have a, a bit more speed going for you rather than against you. So it seems like we're gonna leave Wednesday at around three in the morning or so, go through the little canal, which uh, allows us to avoid the Cape 
which is like, you know, Cape May. Um, so we're gonna just kind of cut through and it'll cut our, our voyage down a little bit and it'll be more mellow, hopefully, than uh, going out into the, the open ocean at three in the morning. So we're gonna try that and hopefully it goes well and then head up to Delaware. It's gonna be awesome. Mm, it's really good. We're at George's right now and it's all you can eat for a lunch setup and a breakfast setup for like really affordable prices. Like I think it's six something for the breakfast and um, seven something for the lunch. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. And it's really good. So definitely come here. It's right by the beach. So you get a, a cool view and some delicious food. We've been walking around Cape May and it's just so exciting. There's so many different houses. The architecture is just incredible. The colors, the wood trims, it's wow, I'm speechless. So we're just wandering around the streets and exploring. What's going on here? We've got a huge piece of timber wrapped around our chain. I had the biggest struggle pulling it up and we're not even at the anchor yet. And last night there was something smashing against our, our hull and we couldn't figure out what it was. It was underwater and eventually it stopped so we stopped worrying about it. Well, this is definitely what it was. Come check it out. This is insane. God. It's connected, maybe. So you get wrapped in the middle or something? No, it's wrapped around. The chain is around it. Oh my God. This is just insane. I don't know if we're gonna make our weather window for the Delaware now, but uh, at least we're able to get up our chain, hopefully. If we can ever get this huge piece of railway tie untied from our boat. This is a terrible anchorage, or at least bottom of anchorage. I've never seen anything like this. Having fun untangling chain. It's wrapped twice around this log. And right now we got the weight taken up by a rope. So we can actually unweight the chain and hopefully untangle it here. Or make it worse, one or the other. Off now at least. Okay. So in theory, all the wraps are off. It's just, okay, it's just got one more. One more wrap going around the back side. Back to the chain, back to the road. Wait a second. I can like slowly pull the chain and so that we can make sure it's not tangled. All right, so it looks like we got the chain unraveled from this. We got to undo the rope that's holding it. And hopefully there's no other cribbing or anything or railway ties held to it. 
but it kind of feels like there's another one there. I really, really hope there's not. This is crazy. Well, that was an eventful morning. I'm really glad we got that off. We're now heading up the little canal here between Cape May and the Delaware. We're just about to head under that bridge that's 55 feet tall. So hopefully we clear. I mean, it is low tide and we're only like 50 feet highballing. So we should be fine, but you never know, right? Um, but yeah, that was a really intense morning. I did not like my wake up. There was comments on the the anchorage here, like on our app, on Alcom app, saying that there's debris and stuff, but I never expected to have our chain wrapped three or four, well, two to three times around something that was, geez, it must have been like 600 pounds. Uh, I could only get up one end of it. I, I guess I'm just grateful that their chain was only wrapped around the end and not in the middle, because we were able to unravel the chain after taking the weight off the log and get it up. Man, what a crazy morning. All right, let's hopefully uh, have a less eventful rest of our passage. Wow, that's close. Oi, oi, oi. Made it. <laughs> Just sailing, not motor sailing. And we're uh, cruising. We're going like seven knots. Well, 6.5 right now. But yeah, we, we lost maybe, well, our average was 7.2 with the motor at like 2000 RPM. And uh, that was just with the head sail. So we turned off the motor, wh whipped up the mainsail, and now we're cruising at like 6.5, 6.7. So I'd much rather do that. We'll do oh, that yeah. all day. And it's so nice that Delaware Bay is actually super calm today, which makes for some really comfortable sailing, cruising. Oh yeah, we also have the current with us, so that's why we're going so fast. Otherwise, we'd probably be, you know, five. maybe 4.55, 5, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we got perfect current. And the, the more we go down the bay, the more we get the peak of the current. Um, so it's it's kind up of fall. Uh, sorry, yeah, up the bay. Uh, the more we get the peak of the current, and it's sort of following us down. So it seems like we're not going to lose the the speed burst, the, the the full speed burst, pretty much the entire way there. So, so that's going to be awesome. We're loving this. Really nice. So you really want to time yourself with leaving Cape May at low tide, and we went through the little canal, the Cape May Canal. And it was so dark. It was actually a little tricky navigating because you couldn't see much. And it's a little shallow in some sections. We saw some six foot. But you fo follow the, your, your Navionics or uh, Aqua Maps. Maps or whatever, and you got a narrow channel that you can kind of stick to. And it seems like it, it says it's much more shallow than it actually is to either side of that channel. So you actually have a bit of leeway. But as she said, there is some shallow spots along the way. And our mast with the antenna is about 50 foot and the bridges you will cross under are 55 foot tall at mean high tide. So we were good, but it did look close. Yeah, it was the closest <laughs> we've been so far to touching our mast. <laughs> Yiddy. Successful tack.
There's crab pots everywhere. I keep wanting to tack, but then I'm like, no, can't tack now. No, can't tack now. Oh, maybe we can tack now. All right, let's try it. We got a full 40 miles of sailing in before we had to turn on that motor. Gah! But it's okay. Uh, we didn't really have much of a choice. I was sick of tacking and like the wind is coming exactly from the direction we need. And it's at like maybe a knot. So even with the current, we weren't really moving very fast. We were moving like three, four knots. Uh, and we were having a zigzag. So yeah, we just turned on the motor. We're about six, less than six nautical miles away from the canal that goes from the Delaware to the Chesapeake. So we're gonna scoot down that canal. Uh, it seems like we're timing the tides pretty well. We just entered the C&D Canal. It's super cool. Uh, and our speed burst has been initiated. Before we entered the canal, we were going like 6.3 with the current heading up the Delaware. And as we turned in and crossed through the, the current, we slowed down to maybe like 5.8 and the current started to pull our bow over to the port side. A little while later, maybe uh, another half nautical mile and even less, the, there's no more current pulling you sideways and it starts throwing you down the CND canal. So now we are going 8.5 knots. That's uh, pretty darn fast for a little 13 horsepower engine. <laughs> All the bridges and the CND canal are about 125, 120 feet vertical clearance and they're all fixed bridges. But there's one bridge, the Conrail Railroad Bridge, that's actually only 45 foot. So we had to radio them ahead to make sure they were going to open it for us because we would pretty much have shaved off a couple of feet of the top of our mast otherwise. Well, I've got to say, I think that was the most entertaining docking we have yet to have done on this trip. We're just chatting away, cruising at 8 knots down the CND canal. And all of a sudden I look on my port side and I saw the Chesapeake Inn signs. I'm like, oh gosh, we're like, we're in Chesapeake City. We've got to pull over. That's where we're stopping for the night. And then, there, so there's a free dock here. It's like free to stay overnight and ten dollars for water and fifteen dollars for power but we only need the dock the funny thing is that we haven't docked in quite a while so i was so not prepared for this i didn't have a dock line at the bow the fenders were not out at all so i'm just like rushing trying to get everything ready while Corey's just driving in circles and we squeezed right at the end of the dock, just on the outside of the canal. Our friends are trying to come over, but there's so much current. 